So you both, or your characters, I should say, work in a library. Mm -hmm. um, you've had a lot of episodes centered on books and books and characters. You had an entire season. Um, or the entire show. Yes. Well, I mean, yes. Um, what are some of your favorite books? You got one? I uh, sort of have an affinity for anything written by Roald Dahl. That was my kind of my upbringing. So, yeah. He's really good at um, painting worlds that you really can envision and put yourself into. So, I always thought I was in the chocolate factory. I always, you know, and that was sort of a lot of fun growing up. So, yeah. Um, recently, though, I've been getting into graphic novels, I think is the correct term. Um, and, yeah. Um, yeah, I started with uh, Saga. And now, oh, now, so now, yeah, now I've moved into uh, <laughs> Preacher, which I'm on the third collection. So someone told me that I'm starting with like the best of the best and I'm yes. just going to like be more disappointed as life goes on. There's so. one more that's up there with that. It's Hell something. I can't remember. Hellboy? No, it's not Hellboy. It's Hell... oh, anyway, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, my book is, uh, is definitely my favorite book of all time is The Alchemist by Paula Coelho. And a lot of books... I, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a diehard fan of Paul Taylor because I like some of his I love some of his books and then I don't really get into some of his other books. But The Alchemist has always been has always been my, my go to book. And I think I buy it. I think I've got it in three different countries now that are different languages and stuff like that. I've actually got it in his native tongue. And hopefully one day I'll learn how to how to, how to, how to read that in his, in the way he wrote it. And um, but um, yeah, so I, I give out The Alchemist to people. I'm like, How's your life? That sucks. I'm like, Here's the Alchemist. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> what is it you love about The Alchemist so much? You know, there's some spiritual notes in there, and I used to, I hated flying. I still hate flying, but I, but I, but I do it so much that I have to. And I remember I would not let myself read it outside of a plane. So if it was a 45-minute flight, two-hour flight, I would read it. And I started marking stuff down in red, so it got me through flights as well, because I just hated to fly, you know, just because I hate to fly. I'm claustrophobic, so it's like... But uh, but it, but it but it helped me through that for a long time. I was very sad when it was over with. But it's but but not only is it spiritual for me, there's magic in it. You know what I mean? Like Paulo Coelho is a very religious writer, um, but he's also he puts magic in there as well. You know what I mean? And so it's just I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a it's a fantasy world, but it's got so many quotes that you can take in life. You know what I mean? And I can't quote any of them right now, but they're, they're in there. Christian, what was the uh, transition like from going from a character in Angel where? Your, uh, I guess you would say like uh, everybody's punching bag. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> punching bag, kind of uh, bordering the line of hero and villain yeah. towards the end, yeah. and uh, going into a character that, uh, like in the librarians, where you're basically just mostly the hero. Well, it's 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 it was a it was a it was a it was a really great transition for me, and I'll tell you why. Because Lindsay and Angel was he was the bad guy. He started turning a little bit good towards the end. You know, I still think I should have been there for that final fight. But, uh, you know, this day and age, I was always mad about that. I was really upset about that. But now that, you know, Andy Hallett's no longer with us and stuff like that, I'm glad that he was the one that killed me. You know what I mean? Because he was my dear friend, and I miss him every day. And so that was sort of, then it went into leverage, which I was the hero, but I was also the bad guy. You know, I was yeah. the, we were the villains, mm -hmm. but we were just fighting a good fight. And then you get to play the librarians, where it was just a good old boy who gets yeah. to be the hero all the time. So going from the absolute evil and transitioning all the way through to the absolute good is fun. However, there's a couple of twists at the end of the season. That, I mean, we can't talk about it. There's a couple of twists to where we're all deciding who we are. And me and him get into it a lot this year. So it's, uh, it's going to be fun watching that dynamic, back, us back and forth. And it's always fun to work with him. Thanks, man. We're on it's okay working with you. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Christian's uh, he's, he's the closest thing to a big brother I'll ever have, so very lucky to have him on set. Well, speaking of working together, uh, Lindy is directing. Um, so, do you see that as a next step? I know this is your first US TV show. Mm -hmm. Do you see that as something happening in your future? Yeah. Uh, he directed me. We did a small uh, project in the yeah. season, and he directed me. I, um, I mean, I did what I wanted to. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Trying to give Christian notes is uh, its an interesting task. No, I, I called Dean up at the end of season three, and uh, essentially it was a pretty casual conversation. I was like, hey, Dean, how's, how's life? And he's like, what do you want? I'm like, all right. Um, I go, what do you, when we fi finish filming, uh, what, what, what do you do with the cameras? Like, what happens to them? And he's like, oh, well, 
they go on to maintenance for a week and then we ship them back to LA. I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Hey, yeah, can, I, can I borrow them for like, uh, I don't know, like four days or something? <laughs> and uh, Dean was uh, actually um, really gracious and, and very generous and he essentially said, look, if you can convince some of the camera operators to work on this thing that you want to shoot with you, then I'm all for it. So I wrote a script uh, while I was shooting and, and essentially um, I, I remember going to pitch it to Gary Camp, our A camera operator, and, and he, uh, I didn't even get through the question. I was like, hey, Gary, so... I'm a really bad schmoozer and I'm like, yeah, there's this thing I want to kind of do. Um, I need a guy that can hold a camera and he's like, I'll do it. And I'm like, okay, cool. Awesome. So we ended up shooting and that was cool. We had uh, Reggie Lee come out and play my father. Um, we had Arden Cho from Team Wolf come and play my sister and it's a cool uh, sort of uh, Japanese um, backstory and then we shot with uh, the wonderful Christian Kane and that was probably some of the most fun. We've had um, just kicked the shit out of everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, Literally. So someone told me that Christian Kane's really good at fight scenes. I went, you know what? Maybe, uh, maybe I should chuck him in some. So we had a good, uh, good time, and yeah, I'm just in the middle of editing that now. And yeah, I mean, it was my first attempt at directing, but um, you did a great job. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's going to come together really well. You know, directing is a lot of uh, is a lot of trusting the camera guy, trusting the director of photography, stuff like that. It's not just one person. They it's don't a do team. All yeah. And so Lindy had a family with her as she walked into this thing. Yeah. She uh, she did exactly what she was supposed to do. She was fantastic. And the, the, I guess the benefit of coming on board as a director on a show you already know everyone top to bottom was she didn't have to worry about relationships or how to speak to people because she, she knew them all. She knew exactly how to address certain people. And, and uh, she was so good uh, in her vision uh, and, and, and uh, relaying that to us that by the end of, uh, you know, our initial pep talk, everything, you know, she was so great with communication yeah, that the everything scenes, was The scenes she hated the so most were the ones that she was in because she couldn't be behind the monitor. She's yeah. very comfortable behind the monitor. Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's, uh, I don't think that'll be her last directing gig by any means. Yeah. yeah. She'll, she'll direct one next season. Yeah. For sure. You, um, you mentioned before, and I want to take this to a bigger picture question, going from Angel to Leverage, uh, you, you've also seen the landscape of television change. Yeah, sure. What would you? What's the biggest difference in either you know, especially for American television, between the Angel days and now in regards to as as actors and as, as creative forces? Okay, you've asked me as an actor, so I'll answer as an actor. The problem that you have is is that people that die for this, people that that, that, that live their life to do this stuff, are losing jobs. Reality TV has come in and has taken over and is kicking the shit out of Hollywood. You may think, yes, they make a lot of money, and the executives aren't upset with it. But I feel really sorry for any kid that gets off the bus with a dream these days because they're just not out there. Anymore. You know what I mean? And it's like there's very few there's very few quality dramas that we're that we're doing. Much less have a drama go a season. Much less have a drama go four seasons. You know what I mean? And I just I've been an advocate for for a while. I think reality TV is killing this industry, and um, and so it's it's sad because there were used to be a, a, if you if you believed in what you did, then that's what you did as an actor. You fought for it. And I used to tell people, I'm like, don't ever stop. If this is what you want to do, you have to give your whole life. You know, sometimes that means not getting married, not having kids. Not, you know, you have to give your whole life. You have to concentrate on this. But you will do something great someday. I can't Too promise that to anybody. Right? And because there's just not a lot of jobs out there. There's not a lot of quality, you know, hour-long drama comedy TV shows out there. You know what I mean? Because of all this stuff. And I don't really care who's rapping or whose dad's doing this or what white housewife is you know it's just like we, we we need to concentrate on that stuff more and that's why we're so fortunate right now to have this job i don't want to get I mean, obviously not getting political but i'm just saying you know and that's the thing is that there was just there was so much life out there before and hollywood just kind of seems dead now there's not as many jobs and people the, the heart's not there anymore you know what i mean and just a quick follow-up on that i just want to ask yeah do you do you see for lack of a better phrase a light at the end of the tunnel now that you there's streaming services, and then you're seeing more online services that are looking for more scripted product. Do you think that's a possible hope, or is it just, it I'm sounds on the, good, but... I'm on the fence with it. I think it's, I think it's great. I think in certain situations it's great. I think in certain, you know, but it's just, uh, look, we have, we, we also have 16 million more channels than we did 10 years ago. You know, so it's in, so there there is you know look, I watch the Cooking Network I watch Chop it's one of my favorite shows I feel like that's on the Food Network though you're not taking anything away from NBC or CBS or or, or WB or TNT for that matter that's a Food Network I watch that and they're supposed to be on there you know what I mean but you know these people that I'm not gonna get into that all. but yes uh, but I do like what Netflix is doing I do like what Hulu is doing I think there's some other uh, great venues for that you know that, that are coming out people that are doing shows and I and I applaud them. You know what I mean? Because they're 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 giving us more venues to, to work on this stuff. You know? 
I'm gonna follow I'm sorry, I'm gonna follow up real quick. Why do you think the librarians has managed to last in this sort? You're saying it doesn't go one season, you're lucky if it maybe goes two seasons. Why do you think or and both of you can answer this, what do you think is so special and unique about the librarians that it does have this very rabid following and as one of those rabid followers? You know, well, I mean, it's just I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up another show that I did, Leverage. You know, what I, I mean? love that one too. Thank you. And so it's <laughs> sort of the same thing, and I'll tell you why. I really think it's successful in this in this in this situation. We're all going through a rough time right now. Every there are other countries, and, and but America as well. We're all going through a rough time right now. Things have been tough for a bit. You know what I mean? We have so many situations that we really need to deal with. Our job is for you to sit down on that couch. Not think about your job, not think about life, not think about what's out there in the world, and be entertained. This is entertainment. And I think that we give you, we fight the good fight on leverage for the guys that you couldn't do it. On the librarians, we let you get to have a Sunday night, now a Wednesday night, to where you get to forget about life for a while. And I mean, when I first wanted to be an actor, I, want, I, put my, I would watch movies and put myself in the shoot, but I watched a Top Gun. I was Tom Cruise during that movie. My mind was able to go there. And I think people can. They get to step out of reality for a bit, and especially with this, go into a fantasy. And I think it's so fun. And I think the reason why this show allows it to do that is because it's not a drama. And it's not a comedy. It's not, it's, a, it's action, drama, comedy, emotion. It's all that wrapped up into one. Leverage did it, Librarians really, really, really does it. What? And so you get every single, I like to call it like Baskin Robbins, you know what I mean? There's all 31 <laughs> flavors in this show. And that's what people want to see. They want to feel good, they want, you know what I mean? It's like. Just more on that, I think um, it works out really well that at a time when everyone was trying to be the next uh, gritty, mm -hmm. cool, hip, edgy thing coming on, we came out with a product that was so familiar and that anyone of any age could enjoy. So uh, I think what happened was this weird kind of vacuum effect where everyone went over to this side and we kind of just stuck our roots in there and it worked out really well. That Now uh, you talk about family shows, I mean, I don't know if there really is one that you can watch from grandkids all the way through to grandparents. Yeah, the last so four yeah. years, the last four years, I've had more kids come up to me and shake my hand. And my kid like loves that. yourself. They, well, all they, of you. Oh, <laughs> they used to do that on <laughs> Angel, and I would, they, you know, like a five-year-old would come up and go, "I love you," on Angel, and I would be like, "Thank you so much." And I'm like, "Nice fucking parents." <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I work for the dead. Day. <laughs> my kid is. You know. so, anyway, I'm just saying. So the librarians is about fighting for things, a lot of different things. I feel like season four is going to get into that even more. One of the things that I've really enjoyed watching it for is sort of like fighting for knowledge and history and um, intelligence. And I think that all three of the, the lits have very different kinds of intelligence. Um, so why do you think intelligence or history or knowledge are things like, or the library, are things worth fighting for? I think, I think, you know, as, as as we used to say, age of the geek, baby. I think that um, I think in the last ten years, intelligence has become very, very sexy. It's the, you know what I mean. It's the new, it's the new cool thing to do. You know what I mean. And so I think that that's, I think that that's helped us out a lot. But also, you know, I don't want to. Do you want to answer some of this stuff? I've got, I've got sort of a. So I read this book. I read this book. Uh, <laughs> I read this book. It's better if I do this anyway. <laughs> I read this book, The Devil, Devil, uh, Devil in the White City. Um, yeah. Love that book. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's doing the movie. Yeah. And um, but the thing was, was reading that book, it was a murder. It was it was, it was our version of, uh, of Jackson Ripley, you know, in, in Chicago. But it was also a history lesson of how Chicago was built. And I found myself enthralled with the drama and the horror and everything else was going on. But at the same time, I was learning so much history, you know? You go into this deep story, then you learn a little bit of history. And I thought oh, that, that was so much fun. That's the one about the World Fair? Yeah, yeah, the World Fair. yeah, 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 yeah. Chicago took it from St. Louis, and it made Chicago. Anyway, so I just think that that's, I think that's kind of fun because not only do you get to learn, you get to be entertained and you get to laugh. You know what I mean? You walk away, you know, that you, you know about three to four different things that you didn't know that actually makes you a better person by knowing it watching one episode of The Librarians. Yeah. And you got to laugh and cry the whole way through. So I think that's what, that's what works in yeah. that show. Did that, did that answer your question there? Are we going to see more music? We, uh, I sing on the show this year. Noah, Noah wrote an episode. We got to wrap he it up. Me, he put me in there singing. And, uh, and, Thank you, and, uh, everybody. Ezekiel Jones can't have any of it, but uh, he, he can't stand <laughs> it, but it's going to be great. Oh, oh, that's for you. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. So Thank you, Thank you guys for your time. I hope we got to everything. Sorry if I...